Welcome back to the channel. So I've caught the crud. Yeah, I got whatever the latest variant is. It's going around with the seasonal flu or something like that. So not too much energy to do any soldering on the uh, Quicksilver project. So I thought I'd take some time and we'd do something a little different here. You know, I don't know how many of you get these um, music direct catalogs, but these come out once a year. This is the 23 edition. And this is just a great publication. So yeah, it's a catalog. Uh, and it's a thick one. It's almost like an, an inch thick from Music Direct. And uh, what I like about these is, you know, I mean, I know, yeah, they got everything online, but sometimes it's nice to kind of, you know, sit with a publication with a nice cup of coffee or tea and and kind of go through and check out some of the gear. So I thought I thought we could take some time to just kind of do that together. You know, they have a lot of nice stuff in here, and it's it's kind of fun to check out. So they got a lot of a uh, lot of new vinyl that's come out. Uh, I prefer a lot of jazz stuff. Like uh, I know this new uh, the Coltrane the the new version of that that they came out with the new pressing the uh, dual dual LP version is really really nice. And uh, they had some cool turntables. What do you guys think about the new MoFi stuff? It looks really cool. It looks pretty cool. They got uh, the Ultra Deck and a studio deck and a precision deck turntable and looks like they start out at about 2500 bucks no 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 less like 1500 bucks i guess for these for these guys so you know i don't know um looking at the construction on the on their uh tone arm it's kind of interesting uh what do you think i don't know compared to some used stuff it'd be interesting to, to hear one of these guys it's hard when you don't have any local vendors that's close to you and VPI, you know, I really, I really like some of the old VPI stuff. is pretty cool. Now I know that their um, the bearing setup on some of their arms, the new uh, or the newer arms, were uh, like a single point bearing. I forget there's a term for it. And then they switched back to like the uh, I think it's a uni pivot. They switched back to a different design, like the old uh, Jelcos were, I believe. But uh, they're making, they're still making some nice turntables. I like VPI, pretty cool stuff. Which kind of makes me think about uh, record clamps. You know, that's a good idea. You see all these new turntables, they usually have record clamps. And uh, you know, something that I noticed, some of the uh, turntables, like the Techniques, which I use a variant of that is a direct drive turntable, I'm most concerned about the weight of some of these clamps, how they might really impact the bearing of the turntable. I don't know, what do you think? Anybody have any experience with that? I think for my next record weight, I think I'm gonna I'm gonna look at one of those clamps that don't really use weight to put down on the bearing, but they kind of clamp down. I'm not sure. They probably have some of those accessories down here, but it's kind of cool. But lots of cool stuff in here. The Regas. I used to really like the Rega P3s. I'm not sure if I buy into their low mass low mass uh, thing on their turntables. They're pretty light, but I guess they sound good. I've never heard one before. Uh, I like the P8. The P8 looks really cool. Those start out about 3,500 bucks nowadays with the cartridge. What about the cartridges? Do you guys have any experiences with the Rega cartridges? I'm really curious about some of their moving coils. They sure do look cool. Like this Rega, the Alphet 3MC, 2,200 bucks. I like the transparent body. I mean, I don't know if, if how that is for dealing with, you know, uh, residences within the cartridge body but it sure does look cool pretty cool stuff let's see what else is needed need here oh okay that's cool the dr dr fleckert these are really nice i would love to own one of these sometime maybe the voltaire turntable that's pretty reasonable you probably pick one of those up used for pretty reasonable it seems like they're made really solid and uh really cool stuff how many of you got into one of the direct drives I, you know, I can't find any of these 1210s or 1210Gs. They're sold out everywhere. Nice turntable. See, they got all sorts of cool stuff. I really like, I really like these, this Music Direct audio catalog because you can see all this cool stuff and it has all the specs and all the information. I mean, they do a really good job. They do a really good job with this. Yamaha is still making tables. Did you know that? Yamaha, look at these guys at GT500. Dar GT5000, that's really cool, 8K. 
but you know it has to trickle down but that's that's really cool it's like the whole whole uh arm wand is arm board is that uh, carbon fiber yeah i'm pretty stuffed up it's hard to talk but anyways i thought i thought this would be kind of cool to look through ortofons i like the quintet series the quintet series is pretty cool i'm thinking about trying out one of these dyna vector 10x5s high output moving coil I don't know if you're if you're a moving coil a hardcore you're like no no low output's the way to go but I don't know you know it seems like you know it seems like there's this dichotomy between you know moving magnet moving iron and moving coil you know everybody says that you know with a low output moving coil right there's less mass the impedance is lower and you don't have to worry about um, you know I, I guess it works better it functionally works better the motor motor mechanism within the cartridge functions more accurately than it does in a moving moving magnet right is my understanding but um but then you end up having to add either a, a pre-amplifier a head amp or a transformer you know so i you know i think you know a hot setup would probably be and i know people disagree with this but a high output moving coil so you eliminate the head amp and eliminate the transformer and i and i know a high output moving coil has other issues but you know i think i think there's opportunity there what do you think I don't know. It'd be interesting to test it out. That's my theory. It just so it seems like when there's less in the system, the better off you are. And you have the Kuetsus. Those are cool. EMT. I mean, they got everything in this magazine. It's really cool to look at. I'm trying to point out some of my favorite stuff here. Have you anybody ever tried out any of these, uh, the new Sumiko cartridges? The little basic moving coil ones. They're pretty affordable. And they, they look cool. They look nice. Mofis has some new cartridges out. Parasound, they make a solid preamplifier, photo of solid preamp. Bat, bats still making stuff. Man, I used to have a bat amp. I don't remember what it was. It was like a VT200 or a bat 200. It was a single ended, uh, high power, really nice amplifier. Man, I love that thing. My friend was a big single end tryout fan and he kept used to tease me all the time and say, oh, it makes a great subwoofer amp. But those, the bat amps were really sweet sounding. Let's see what else we got. Lots of photo stages, Sutherland, op amp stuff, more MoFi stuff, record cleaning. Has anybody, what do you guys use for record cleaners? You know, I'd love to get some of these degridders or something like that, but they're so expensive. You know, it just seems like 3K for an ultra cleaner, ultrasonic cleaner. I mean, it's basically just a little water vibrator. I don't know, maybe. I mean, I'm sure they work good, but it just seems like it should be around five or 600 bucks, not 3,000. Who knows? Anyways, all this stuff's expensive. It's an expensive, uh, expensive hobby we have. Uh, record accessories. Yeah, you know, you can't, you can't forgo a good stylus force gauge. That's really important. They have some nice ones in here. And uh, I like these lights, these precision lights. You know, I see a lot of people ad hoc that get the little Ikea ones, but I always want to try one of these reliables. These reliables are really cool. They look cool. Stands. We got all sorts of cool stuff. Got all sorts of cool stuff in here. Some photo stages. Rance has come out with some new stuff. Is all this stuff Class D? I'm not sure. I hope not. I'm just skeptical about Class D. But they do have some good. Like this. You see, everything's in this catalog. They got everything. They got the Moran stuff. What do they got? They got. They got streaming stuff. They got the streamers. They got Rune. It, see, it's all in here. It's really cool. Yeah, if you don't subscribe, you know, go to Music Direct. I am not getting paid for it. I know you're saying he's getting paid by Music Direct. I'm not getting paid by new Music Direct. I just want to share. People don't know this is out there. And it's a nice resource. You know, I've been collecting these. I collect these. I probably have like four or five years worth of the Music Direct catalogs. And they're just nice to have as a reference. Um, yeah. Yeah, some DAC stuff. They got the DACs. Cord, cord stuff. I'd like to hear some of that someday. Audio Quest is still making their cables. Rotel, the Diamond series. This is supposed to be nice. And what's his name? Did a review in this in uh, Stereophile. Uh, the DT6000. It looks pretty cool. I'm glad they went back to a traditional transport. I remember for a while, everybody was making those slot transports like they have in uh, car stereos. And I, I just I hated those. That was a real turnoff for me. I really don't want a slot loaded disc loader system in my home stereo. I don't know, I just didn't care for it. To each his own, you know. 
Uh, more bat stuff, tube stuff. That's cool. Look at that. Look at all those caps. That's cool. And uh, monoblocks start out at 45k a pair. Yeah, that's not too bad. Mortgage your house. Now's the time to do it. Uh, that makes cool stuff. There's no doubt about it. It's super, super nice. Super nice and well-made. Macintosh. Look, they got the whole Macintosh stuff. You know, sometimes I feel like giving it all up and just getting one of these Macintosh integrateds and just call it good. You know, I'm sure people do that. You just get sick of, sick of moving gear around and sick of moving cables. And, you know, I like an M3 3500. It's supposed to be really nice sounding and they look cool. Just plug that in and call it good. Get a nice source, nice DAC. You see, they got everything in this catalog. It's really cool. And the uh, Luxman stuff, Luxman's in here. Very cool. MQ88, UC, SE tube amplifiers, 6200. Very cool. I'm glad the meters are coming back. It's a cool look. Parasound. Parasound Icon Audio. No, I've never really heard of Icon Audio. I'm not familiar with them. But they're in here. It looks pretty cool. I don't know, man. You got to think about you know, these tubes look cool, but you start getting it matching 6550s or KT88s. And that's expensive to replace. You know, I mean, they're like 200 bucks a pair. Two, four, six, eight. You're looking like a thousand bucks to retube your amp. That's a lot of. I like low power stuff myself. Keeps it simple, keeps it cheap. Arcam makes some good stuff. Yamaha's in here. I'm glad Yamaha is still plugging away at it. I mean, some people are like, you know, joke about it but actually i've never heard anybody joke about some of the newer yamaha stuff it's good stuff but you know it's not like audio research or something like that but i, I don't know their build quality is looking really good i'm glad they're still going at it rotel you don't see that much from denon anymore you know denon's not really making a lot of high-end stuff at least not in the u.s maybe it's just not being imported cambridge cambridge is cool i like i like things that have a large volume control you know i think that's a nice Nice design. It's more tactile. I just I don't really like the push button stuff. I like old school knobs. Yeah, NAD. I've had some NAD stuff. It sounds good. Bel Canto. Man, one of the sweetest DACs ever had was a Bel Canto. I think it was like the 1.1. They came out with a one and they did some upgrades to it. That thing's really easy to mod too. If you ever run across a Bel Canto 1.1 or 1.2, I think it was for cheap they're a nice DAC you know plug it into your rune or something use it for streaming they're really warm nice sounding Levinson still going at it they make really cool stuff yeah it's pretty cool looking man I remember in the 90s me and my buddies we used to go to Chelsea Audio in Portland and uh and they were so put together there man everybody was so professional it felt like you're in a Mercedes dealership everybody was wearing suits and stuff and the salespeople were very informed very polished very articulate really cool and nice guys and very patient and even though you know at the time where me and my buddies were just a couple punks we used to go into Chelsea's they would take their time and they'd show us they'd practice their uh, sales pitch on us you know and, and uh, we'd sit there and drool over the $10,000 amplifiers, which, you know, in the 90s, you could buy a nice car for that. Still can today, but... Uh, and these things are a lot more than ten grand Now, look, you're looking at this Integrate. is 26 k 37 for a pair of the uh, number 536 Monero power amps. Yeah, but that's cool stuff. Leak. Man, I wish Leak... You know, this is cool, but... I wish they would come back with some of their tube amps and make it really nice with chassis mount RCAs, high quality. I know it would be expensive, but it would be cool to see uh, the leak name on some tube gear again someday. Oh, Denon is in here. Okay. Yeah, the Denon. I know the PMA A110 got some good reviews. That's pretty cool. And uh, look at this. Hi-Fi Rose. That's really cool. You know, I got to give it to them for doing something different. It looks really cool. It's a little busy, but it but it looks cool. Class A. Class A still making stuff. I think they're a Canadian company. B&W. Yes, he got everything in this catalog. All the specs, all the prices. Music Direct, I'm telling you. Sign up for their catalog. It's fun to have. It's fun to look through. You know, it's so funny. You know, I used to think that <clears throat> when I used to read some of my favorite reviewers in the uh, in the magazines, like Absolute Sound and, and the Stereophile, you know, you all thought that all their living rooms, their sounding rooms, the way they described it, looked like something out of a B&W or, or a Y&A speaker 
magazine advertisement, you know, you always thought they had, would all have these elaborate living rooms, you know, they're 40 by 40 with these ginormous speakers. And then you see some of these reviewers on YouTube and they're like in these little closet sized living rooms and, you know, they got, you know, like Walmart type furniture and, you know, garage wire racks holding up their gear. And I'm like, I, I don't know if it adds a lot to your credibility. It's kind of funny. I don't know if anybody else has ever noticed that before, but uh, perception's a funny thing, right? Perception's a funny thing. Revel. Revel makes some nice sounding speakers, but I just, I don't like the looks of them. You know, my, it's my better half. You know, there's this old video game called The Day the Tentacle. Anybody ever remember that? Are we still rolling here? Yeah, we're still rolling. Yeah, Day of the Tentacle. You know, it's so funny. And she showed me the video game and she says, it looks like something off of Day of the Tentacle. And ever since then, it's just ruined the Rebel for me. It looks like something off of Day of the Tentacle. It's very funny. The, just how they have the speakers and they have this little curvy thing that follows the, I, you know, I just don't really care for it. But man, quality product, no question there. Wharfdale. Now I, I use the, I have the Linton speakers myself and, uh, and they're not perfect, you know, and I know they're made in China and stuff and, but you know, they got a, nice, a lot of nice reviews, but you know, one thing I really attracted me to the Lintons and I, I'll tell you, it's something that's really missing in speaker reviews that, uh, that I see. And the issue with speakers, my biggest pet peeve is a lack of low level dynamics in speakers. You got all these speakers that use these little paralleled six inch drivers like these and, uh, like Vienna acoustics and, and calf, they use these little, you know, I know they're different sizes, but you know what I'm talking about. The mainstream speaker today is a small slender cabinet, usually with an under eight inch speaker, usually a, a, a row of six inch, you know, mid range drivers or bass drivers. And the thing to me is that they just don't do low level dynamics. They sound great when you turn them up. But, you know, not everybody listens to music at, you know, 125 dB or something like that in their in your 12 by 13 living room, right? And and the Lintons, although not perfect, they do low level dynamics better than most speakers. And it's because of that box design and that eight inch driver and being a ported enclosure. And I really appreciate that. I like the low level dynamics. You know, they, they hint on it, they hint into that that realm better than a lot of other speakers. And I haven't mentioned, haven't heard anybody mention that before. But uh, something you, you know to listen to is how do speakers sound when you're on a low volume? I imagine these uh, Esselians, uh, the Wharfdales, do, do that better as well. I tend to be more attracted with speakers that have larger drivers. The low level dynamic factor is a, is a big issue for me. That's something like a lot of people mentioned with some of these clips and uh, what are the other, some of the other speakers, high end speakers that use a larger bass driver just tend to do better, better with low level dynamics and I, it makes it much more musically satisfying. And you see the more I'm talking about with the Elax, you got that row of the little six inch drivers. I've never heard these, maybe they're life changing, I don't know, but typically, typically, um, you know, the modern design of speakers, and I think they do it for, they do it for acceptability in living rooms. You know, you get a small, thin tower. It's, it's easy for people to fit in their living rooms, but man, it just doesn't do anything for low level dynamics, if you ask me. Yeah, the new KLH speakers. I haven't heard those. Have you heard them? What do you think? They're a lot of money though. What are these, four grand for the new KLH Model 7s? That's a lot of money. That's a lot of money, four grand. Buy a lot of speaker for four grand. Rel, Rel makes some great subs. Always has. Yeah, great product. I like Rel subs. I've thought about getting one of the little T7s, you know, for about a grand. Those are a nice sub. I start to get skeptical of sub when you start getting lower than a than a than a seven to eight inch sub or ten inch or ten inch driver. You start getting down to an eight or a six inch sub. I mean, I don't know. Maybe it works, maybe it doesn't. Seems like you wouldn't get that much extension. Trying to use a mid-range driver as a sub, but I'm sure they make it work. Yep, you got your you got your power power filtration gear. Now ground, they got everything here. Cords, look at this, they got everything in here. It's a nice catalog. Cable. Well, that's it. You know, I don't want to make this go forever. You got your headphones, lots of new headphones in here. I mean, everything's in here. I just think it's kind of cool to look through. I thought we'd just take a moment and go through it together. 
check it out. But if you don't have the Music Direct catalog, you know, you might just grab one. It's nice to have on the shelf. It's nice to browse through, maybe when you're doing some passive listening or something like that. Like they got the Macintosh stuff. That's cool. Those look pretty. What else they got? They got the accessories. They got the, I think we need more racks. Solid Steel makes a nice rack, but there's not a whole lot of manufacturers that make good quality racks, especially linear ones like these. I mean, there's Solid Steel, and then, I mean, that's, you know, there's a few other small companies online. And the other CDs. Yep. Good source material in here. If you want to actually own stuff instead of stream it. Yeah, so, you know, like I said, it's a nice catalog. Thanks for hanging out, and, uh, more to come. Take care. Happy audio.